guys welcome back to my youtube channel this is daniel rosal here for today's video i'm going to be trying something a little bit different um i've been getting these youtube comments for about the last year since i started posting more videos on youtube and i've been typically writing back to people and i felt like you know varying it up a bit sometimes it's hard to get sufficient depth when you're writing back and i thought you know seeing as youtube's a video platform why not do video answers so i'm going to call this youtube mailbag i'm going to try to get through four or five of my recent comments here on youtube and i hope that this will be an ongoing thing as i have mentioned recently i am currently trying to reorganize my channel make it less random um there have certainly been a huge variety of topics to date uh it's going to be a work in progress so if the randomness is bothering you you don't have to stick around but uh if you do enjoy the randomness stay along for the ride and this mailbag is going to be um uh coming some somewhat regularly let's just say um i'm also speaking of other developments on this youtube channel and going to ireland tomorrow first time in a number of years i'm very excited about this i'm also very excited about the fact that i'm transiting through turkey as a turkish coffee aficionado the homeland of coffee albeit just the airport um so we're gonna be we're gonna be talking about turkish coffee we're gonna be talking about networking and maybe one or two more questions i'll get around to answering in this first mailbag video okay first question first comment uh that we have let's go for this one that's unbelievable this is from ray nunes nunes i think that's a portuguese name nunes uh ray says that's unbelievable after a month of suffering just found this video thanks a lot no problem ray i think people usually buy this hardware to balance internet referring this is about the er605 tp link failover bug resolution video um that's why they don't get problems i brought this I, I bought this to have backup internet so it was easy to realize the network has changed um i don't know if people most people buy the er605 for load balancing i have don't have any data to support that idea but i think you're probably right um i haven't tried the load balancing on the router as i said in the various videos i did about it i just use it for backup internet the backup one backing up the main one um i have said in a couple of videos that i wasn't so impressed with tp link throughout this uh home internet modification process um now my current currently my home network which is the bottom uh part of my shelf you can see behind me in the green um it's actually an all tp link network there is well besides my isp router i've got the load balancer um i've got a cellular tp link router as feeding in the backup serving as a backup modem and i have a tp link access point and i have a tp link repeater so my entire apartment is actually filled with tp link hardware it's cheap it's pretty much plug and play but uh that was definitely not the best experience uh having that bug in which basically when my primary one was running it kept switching over to my backup one I flashed the new hardware and that pretty much fixed the problem but TP-Link were not helpful um, I must say and that's why you know I recommend uh, because this is a type of home networking thing that you kind of want to set it and forget it you don't want to have a buggy um, hardware or firmware controlling your network so um, for that reason I do recommend probably that folks who have a bit more uh money to play around with look for something like ubiquity or uh one of the other companies i also recommend there's a subreddit called home networking reddit.com slash r slash home networking and the internet's become so clogged up with these uh fake reviews that it's very hard to get objective info and that's why i continue to uh be a big fan of reddit and uh advocate for uh doing research on reddit where hopefully you'll be in touch with people who know what they're talking about so basically that's interesting you're probably right i wouldn't however if i were doing another home network backup internet build i wouldn't go for tp link hardware okay i just saw i have a call to take in five minutes so i'm just going to do one more question and then we're going to uh, wrap up this first mailbag kenneth cohen says thank you for posting this is my how long does it take to grind turkish coffee by hand whenever i tell people i'm into turkish coffee and i grind by hand they say that must be how, who has time for that that must take a while so that's why i made that video i thought i don't know maybe it's two minutes i've never timed it so i timed it and the conclusion is it takes about one minute to grind one tablespoon of turkish coffee in my opinion not bad 
Some folks put two tablespoons of Turkish coffee in a Turkish coffee. I find that too strong in the little finjans. I think if you're going to go for two cups, use a bigger cup size, um, essentially. Um, anyway, Kenneth says, thank you for posting. Finding this information is indeed quite hard to find as I search for hand grinders. It seems as though multi-purpose grinders can take several minutes. And so a dedicated Turkish coffee grinder is a way to go. So, Ken, um, I have three at least different hand grinders. I have the Lido 2, Lido ET, Sozin, and I have a cheap one on Amazon whose name I forget. Um, I did a video comparing grinding for Turkish using both a Sozin hand grinder and using the Lido 2. My conclusions were as follows. Firstly, if we look at the price, it's big. The Lido, all their grinders, a lot more expensive than these little things you can just buy off the street in Turkey or buy online from sozengrinders.com. The grinding process was actually a lot more fluid on the Sozin, despite it being a smaller, much smaller handle. So there's that. And of course, because it's smaller, it takes up less counter space. Now, I did grind both Turkish coffee and cardamom in both the Lido and the Sozin. I grinded them together. So what are my conclusions? Um, if you really, really don't want to grind anything but Turkish coffee, I'd actually definitely save the money and go for a tur dedicated Turkish coffee grinder like the Sozin. There are a few other companies and I know that I'm pronouncing Sozin wrong. Someone has corrected me before on my Turkish pronunciation of Sozin, Jezva, at least Jezva I pronounce right, but S-O-Z-E-N, however that's pronounced, um, I think they're good. The Lido, um, it's nice because my wife uh, drinks pour over coffee, so it's nice to have a couple of hand grinders. And once you get into hand grinding, um, you know, the couple of minutes per day ends up becoming quite enjoyable. Feels like you're doing some sort of exercise. I don't know if there's actually any uh, benefits from doing the cranking, but it's kind of relaxing. And I think one minute, if you're drinking four cups of coffee per day, it's not so bad to take an additional four minutes out of your day to do a little bit of. Uh, you know, uh, exercises while you think about the amazing coffee you're brewing. So um, my sort of thoughts about the matter are if you are really sure you just want to do Turkish, go for a Sozin. If you might occasionally want to be grinding, hand grinding for pour over, for espresso, for cold brew, uh, which I'm currently dabbling in, um, I'd recommend the Lido. If you can afford it and you're a real coffee enthusiast, just remember every time you make coffee at home, you're saving money on not buying coffee outside of the outside of your house. So uh, if you can afford it, I recommend actually picking up one of each, the dedicated Turkish one, and then keeping a separate bigger hand grinder for when you want to break out and experiment with different grinds or someone else in your house. But it, it's interesting that you're saying that the Lido is slower for Turkish coffee. I haven't measured the time difference, but intuitively, I think you're right about that. It's less fluid and it probably takes uh, more time. Okay, I have to jump off my mailbag to go and do a Zoom call. Um, that was the first mailbag. If there are more interesting YouTube comments, I will be doing more of these because it's a lot more fun than typing into my YouTube studio screen. Thanks to everyone who comments on my videos. The engagement is much appreciated. And really, keep the questions coming. They make my day fun to answer. And uh, subscribe if, you, if it's your first time on this channel. And you want to get more videos on all these random, wacky topics. Thanks for watching.